Today, we're unboxing an insane beast. Last time we tested an Yoki AQ177 with the biggest e-bike battery I've seen so far. I think this is the biggest battery in the world on any e-bike so far. Now we have even bigger battery capacity. The AQ177 was 2.8 kilowatt hour. This beast is 3.1 kilowatt hour. This is nuts. I can do weight lifting with this pack. Dude, if you add an inverter or some USB plugs, you can use this as a portable power station. It's that big, it's crazy. Look at this. I really appreciate it when e-bike manufacturers are going nuts. And Anyoki is really pushing the limits here in the right direction. This is a super long range e-bike delivery option. I have tested previous Anyoki AQ177 version and this is something insanely big, heavy duty, makes previous e-bike model look like a little toy. Just look at the battery sticking out and this white color is looking good here makes this bike pop. The Pro Max is the top product in this brand line. This e-bike is distinctive with a wide body frame, front and rear suspension, motorcycle front type light. An e-bike for only the most daring riders hungry for that long excessive range. You can ride this for a week or even more without charging and without worrying about that. The A8 Pro Max keeps the same relative size, slightly wider body, and the frame is so much better built. Way much better welds compared to its predecessor. If you're looking closely, it's perfectly welded everywhere. I can't find or see imperfections anywhere underneath here. A new different design that looks so much better and on top of that they added a stronger 1000 watt rear hub motor that outputs peak 1400 watts. Versus 750 that outputs 1200 watts peak on AQ177. And they added a higher 52 volt compared to 48 volt battery on AQ177 Pro Max. This new model looks more beefier, more aggressive, faster compared to AQ177, which weighs 112 pounds. The battery alone weighs 33 pounds, IPX6 rated. The newer A8 Pro Max only weighs 101 pounds. The same battery, 33 pounds, IPX6 rated. So they shave here 11 pounds and made a much better frame. This is a super beefy, a very aggressive, strong bike that at this point looks like a motorcycle with pedals and still looks incredibly awesome. We have improvements everywhere and we'll go into details, but I need to mention front and rear suspension, it's upgraded compared to its previous model. Let's get this first down. I'm not as heavy as I expected. The previous AQ177 was really, really heavy. This one is not that bad. So this is the bike. Looks pretty good. Guys, I want to tell you about this EV raffle run by one of the best non-profit groups fighting climate change, Chesapeake Climate Action Network Fund. All proceeds fund their amazing clean energy advocacy. Enter today for a chance to win a Rivian SUV or truck, or a Tesla Model X Plaid plus 10 years worth of free charging, or a Lucid Air Grand Touring with 500 mile battery. With only four weeks left, the raffle is currently way undersold so the odds are in your favor. To enter, just visit www.evraffle.org. Tickets are just $200 for a great cause. So visit evraffle.org today. Let's take a closer look at the bike now. This frame is massive. Look how thick it is. And this battery, this is the biggest battery I've tried so far. So the previous version was 48 volts, 60 amp hours. I think it was 2.8, 2.9 kilowatts. This is 52 volts and 60 amp hours. So this is 3.1 kilowatts. This is insane. Just look at this frame. Look how beefy this dual suspension in the back here is. And what I like here, it's so easy to replace it. Only have a screw here, a screw here. I assume there's threads in the back. So just take it out with the drill, really fast, really easy. And you have here just ability. So, if it's too, you know, too soft or too heavy, right, you can adjust. There's so much, almost an inch and a half on this side, and there's almost an inch on this side. So there's so much to you know, adjust here. Really nice. The welds are perfect compared to the previous model, which was uh, really ugly. I mean, strength-wise, it's good. Here we have perfect welds. 
seamlessly and nicely painted i believe this is a controller screwed in here so once you remove that it just drops down but look at this all the welds perfectly done and what it's cool here I think you can put a lock here, but I'm 6'3", and I can actually lift it higher or lower, and in this posture, I can pedal comfortably. This is the highest point, and there's so much room here, and I can almost fully extend my leg. So pedaling on this frame, it's so comfortable and so easy. And this bike is massive. You don't need this, but being able to pedal, it's such a big difference, legal-wise, and also, I like to pedal all the time, so for me, this is perfect. A nice crank set really nicely done guys really beautifully done and how the battery degrades and drops down all details all the welds here on the side look it's perfectly done it's beautiful man they really outdone themselves and uh, once we get suspension that front fork is upgraded so really good action really comfortable here you have this clamp this plastic spacer and the way it transitions is just beautiful everywhere nicely done and you can upgrade this guys you can get some higher end suspension also you can get the super 73 the 500 dollar you know from the website the front fork which will make this even better or you can get the fox 40 and really make this you know bike amazingly you know high quality and high performance um the the motor guys 48 volts 1000 watts um, and we'll test that and see how it performs but there's room here to go 1500 watts 2000 watts just swap the controller keep the same battery and this is a beast of a bike uh, i have this uh, you know the seat this cushion in the back and i use this in case if i want to wrap a backpack or something but you can get one of those uh, baskets medium size longer size you can get a child seat you can put an extension and put two child seats this rear rack is so nicely connected big bolts um, there's no weight limit here i didn't see any ratings but this is really beefy and uh, you can play with this and really put heavy load on this thing this frame the way it looks is just beefy really powerful really can take a lot of load and really nicely done guys i love it look here reinforcement it's just like build like a motorcycle it's it can this bike can take 50 miles an hour easily if not faster it's just beautifully done this seat this is the most comfortable e-bike seat i've tried so far so when you put your weight it's really soft let me show you here look how soft it is and once you sit down it creates like a you know like half of the sphere it's so comfortable so you have you know a lot of cushion here really thick and then the sides and the top the front the end and the sides it really gives you good comfort even if you're sitting for long or if you're paddling it's super comfortable and you have here screws so you can play with this it's really well done and it's really soft and it's a lot of cushion here from nothing from very you know thin it goes to very fake and it's almost like two inch and a half three inches of cushion and here in the front look how soft it is really really comfortable i'm really impressed the way it is this is perfect this is the best the most comfortable seat i tried so far on this moped style e-bikes here you have a quick access to the controller so if you need to service it good cranks good pedals very nice kickstand and you can see it. the structure looks so nice it's really well done and it looks really really cool here's the bottom even here it's nicely welded and the cables this is sticking out but the cables are going in you can put it in and here you can put like a rubber gasket let me see if i can get close up here so you guys can see that's the only thing that's missing here you can seal this um, you can do it probably yourself find like a rubber a piece of rubber and cut it and cover this but uh, they should cover that so it's all sealed properly uh, besides that here underneath it's perfect so this front suspension has no adjustability it connects here to the stem right and you don't have that uh, front and back adjustability but still the way it is it's super comfortable but you can play with this you can you know adjust here get different type and connect and have that uh, swing uh, angle uh, but the way it is super comfortable the spacers when it turns so don't scratch the the frame so this front suspension has no adjustability but uh, the way it comes it has so much travel look at the oil it's almost three inches of travel and it's butter smooth the only thing is when you go fast and you hit bigger potholes i'm really heavy 230 pounds 225 230 it's bottoming perfectly so when you hit the the lower end 
it's very plush, very comfortable, but when it rebounds, when it goes up, I think the spacer is very thin, so it hits a little bit. It's a slight noise, but nothing too bad. Uh, nothing too, you know, excessive. Plastic fenders, suspension for this price, for what you get is very good. I can say amazingly good, but if you wanna make it perfect, you can upgrade. For this price, there's room to spend a couple hundred bucks more, sell this one and upgrade and make it perfect. I like the logo, the decals, really nicely it's not uh, you know like they're stickers but higher end stickers really look good the charging port well insulated here i like it guys i like it a lot i like what i see and it feels good and it's just you know well put together uh, i think this bike even if you compare to aq177 52 volts right the white or other color options this just feels better uh, even pedaling, when I saw pictures uh, online on Amazon and when they announced this uh, model, it just looked like, okay, this is just like Super Century, just cruising, no pedaling. I was so wrong. This is so good for pedaling. It's uh, thicker, look, it's almost like, what, four inches uh, tires, so you can feel the tires resistance and how heavy the bike is. You know, it's not like, you know, we can pedal when the battery is dead. You're not gonna do something very hard and almost impossible to do, but, uh, when you you know get 20 miles an hour and you engage the pedals you can feel even without pedals it has so much oomph so much power but here when you start pedaling you can feel like you know it's comfortable it's doable and it's just so much joy to ride guys it's a really cool model i like the geometry really really comfortable and uh, really good for long range rides there's some close-ups here how the construction is done the screen will power on a second. The grips, the grips are really good quality and they're narrower. So, you know, grips, uh, some people like it uh, thicker or narrower, depends on your hand uh, size, but uh, the way it comes here, really good quality. I like the stickiness and it's a little bit narrower. So it's very comfortable for my hand. We have hydraulic brakes and we've seen these brakes on various scooters and e-bikes models, so very good quality. The same console, my favorite big design, the motorcycle mount, which I use for all my EVs, check it out. This is the best mount for your phone in the world. CIS uh, Shimano shifter, which can be upgraded. I'm not a big fan, but it does the work as it's supposed to do. And this is the part I really like and enjoy. This, uh, you know, part of the of the grip is so narrow. You have hardware to secure it, so you can adjust the way you like it. You know, follow this pattern. Really comfortable, and then the twist throttle. There's no dead zone. Engages right away, and it's butter smooth, and it's a good action. I like it. The motor, you can see there are 48 volts, 1000 watts rating. Do a speed test and range test and see how much is the maximum output. Standard Shimano shifter and seven uh, speed cassette, nothing special, standard entry level stuff. Cables hidden in the back, nicely routed. Coming here from underneath from the frame. Good chain, good drive. Screws here are kind of ugly. They're too long and sticking out a little bit uh, weird. So you can get a different spacer, maybe get something black and shorter and replace that. Or maybe just cut it down here and make sure don't destroy the threads. So it looks nice. The same here, too long. Uh, besides that, everything else looks really cool. Here, battery indicator. Not sure if you can see that in the camera because it's very sunny today. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, the cables in the front here. Nothing special can be done a bit better, but the way it is, it doesn't bother me. It is what it is, but you can, you know, play with that. You can get this uh, kind of stuff and, you know, reroute it and uh, organize and do the better, a better cable management. A big front, like motorcycle type light, and we'll check that later. Let's power this on. The bike, you use this remote and it comes with two keys for the battery. So you press the flash symbol once, Second time it comes on and you have very nice graphics, top speed, level assist, battery and average uh, information. So you don't want to press it. Uh, you don't want to push it in the zero. Let's see. So I have one, two, three, four, five levels of assist. Lights on, off. We have here various stats, maximum speed, average, amp hours consumed, odometer 13.8 miles so far. So once we start riding, we'll get those uh, numbers for you. But uh, I'm not sure if the camera picks this up. In a very sunny, bright daylight, this is very easy to read. And uh, to turn it off, you just press this button. And that's pretty much it. Top speed.
this is set up to have a very smooth uh, acceleration and not really torquey from the start but then when you hit 21 22 miles an hour it kind of shoots a little bit so it's uh, really user-friendly probably limited it doesn't feel like really punchy it's like very smooth Let's see now different levels of assist. So in the first one. Yeah, it's about uh, nine, 10 miles, I think. 10 miles, let's go second one. So that's second, let's see third one. So that's the third, let's see the fourth. Picks up really nicely. And the fifth you already seen. the results what do you think guys let me know in the comments below this is interesting and i have a feeling that this bike it's actually locked and limited so i will be asking i'll be sending email today to the company to the manufacturer and see if there's any unlocking because it's 1000 watts and peak power should be much higher but even the way it is i think it's pretty good and uh you don't need more for deliveries, for daily commutes, right? For long range rides, you go on highway, not highway, but let's say long trails where there's no traffic and you just cruise. Uh, 35, I hit 35 on a highway. Uh, this is the footage right here and it stays 35, 36, but 34, 35 consistently. Once you pick up the speed, it just stays very stable at 35 miles an hour, which is perfect with my weight. If you're lighter, you'll definitely get a uh, higher top speed. Once you get fully charged battery, you'll get 36, 37, close to that uh, top speed. If you're under 200 pounds, you'll get definitely close to 40 miles an hour. Now, what is cool about this, right? All the components are average, nothing fancy schmancy. So what's cool here, you have a huge ass battery. And what you can do here, you keep the controller for eight volts and you just swap. Uh, actually, no, you have to swap the controller. You get the 1500 watt rear hub with the controller rewire it and you can get this bike to go 40 plus maybe 45 close to 50 miles an hour depending on your weight depending on your weight so that's doable and uh, i'll try to get you guys uh, a discount code from the manufacturer so you can maybe get this bike and if you you know if you're fine if you're happy with this uh, performance this is great but if you want to make it go faster a friend of mine actually wants to get this bike and do 72 volt conversion which will be insane with five kilowatt rear hub this will be like a motorcycle speed, maybe 60 miles an hour, maybe faster. Who knows? We'll see if we'll get this project to life in the following videos uh, at the end of the summer. But the idea is you keep it the way it is. You get amazing specs for this price. If I get you guys a, a better deal, a uh, discount, you can sell the existing components, upgrade and make this an awesome, fast motorcycle. Yeah, the bike is really, really cool compared to uh, AQ177. This is way better. In the pictures, if you look on Amazon, they have some shitty pictures. It doesn't look good at all. It looks weird, like, you know, like you can't pedal. I'm 6'3 and I can pedal this thing and I'm comfortable with it. And this freaking seat is awesome. It's so comfortable. I did today, what, 36 miles, my ass doesn't hurt. So really well put together and it's comfortable. Now, I pushed the battery much more than AQ177, so got almost 60 miles from the battery when it was winter, it was cold, so I'm surprised that I only got 36, but I was really crushing it on the west side, really pushing hard, and mostly throttle, not much pedaling. Uh, but um, yeah, I think, I think still the results are pretty insanely cool. I think the results are really good. Range test. This is the longest range test I have ever done. First two lines, I only use throttle, and the battery pack covered about 30 miles per line versus the previous AQ177 test where I got almost 60 miles per line. 
but with pedal assist. Here I was just on a highway, just throttle open to the max and just cruising. During this range test I was all the time at the maximum fifth speed level. After the first two lines were gone I started to pedal assist and speeds between 25 to 35 miles an hour. During the test my weight was 225 to 230 pounds and it took me over six hours and a half to deplete this battery. I was able to cover 102 miles in range. If I pedal assisted from the start, regular, you know, riding without doing crazy stuff and pushing this bike to the max, I could probably cover 130 to 150 miles in range easily. And at third speed, going 20 miles an hour constantly, if you weight 175 pounds, which is the average American adult male weight, you can get easily over 200 miles in range on this bike. So this is very important, I think. Uh, I covered 118.5 miles with the bike speedometer, with the bike calculations. At 105 miles, the battery start flashing and it flash until 118. At 105 miles, I switch from five to third speed level assist and I was still able to cover around 20 to 22 miles an hour top speed with assist with pedaling. So if I kept five, it would probably die. And what's good about this battery, there is no sag. So strong to the end, I only swapped from switch from five to three. That's the only difference. But another thing which is interesting here, the bike calculates rotation per wheel. So it has to be accurate. The GPS at the beginning, it was difference, let's say between 30 to 50 miles, first line and second line, I got three to five miles difference. Then from five miles went to 10 miles. Then when I reached 95 miles in range, it went to 13, 14 miles, difference was higher here versus GPS and at the end came to almost 16, 17 miles in difference. So I don't know why this is uh, such a big discrepancy. Another range test, I never had this issue. So I think maybe GPS is losing connection and it's just mopping, it's just tracing the line to the next uh, point when it reconnects. So I think that this is more accurate number versus the GPS. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to see maybe somebody, you know, is working in this area and maybe can clarify why there's such a big difference in range numbers. Hill climbing. I ended up in the Bronx and I found this very steep hill and I started at the base on the throttle alone about 20 miles an hour, maintaining the speed. Once I start climbing further, the speed decreased. Slow down a bit, 14 now. 30 miles. Yeah, this is really steep. Yeah, 30 miles and it's going up. Yeah, 30 miles an hour. It's pretty good. Once I start pedaling again, the speed climb back to 60 miles an hour, 18 and later 20 miles an hour. Lights. Oh, they're actually really bright. Really wide spill and throws really far. And we can play with adjustments. You can see actually the lights are really really good the only thing is when you ride it shakes a little bit so i have to tighten up the the bracket and let's check the rear lights very bright and we have active rear brake light which is even brighter and i'm actually very surprised uh, now i'm pedaling and zero assist and it's actually doable it's not that bad so here's zero assist and i'm getting 13 miles an hour and you can also shift. 13, 14, not bad. Yeah, let's try here. Slide up heel, no assist. Yeah, this is not easy. For pedaling, this is a very heavy bike. Yeah, this is not fun. Definitely not fun. For the charger, this is what I got with the bike, the same exact quality, which is not really great as the previous model. This is 58.8 volt charger, 8 amp hours. This will get your bike from empty to fully charged between 7 to 8 hours. And as you can see, it's not really good quality, it's very light. And let me show you a better quality charger. This is the same 58.8 volts, 4 amp hour charger. Look at the size comparison and this is much heavier, much better built. Now, to be on the safe side, this is what I recommend. You can find 58.8 volt charger on Amazon. This is much beefier, much better charger, has a built-in fan, better components, feels sturdy and heavier, much better quality, and it feels safer. 
this e-bike looks very unusual, unlike any other bikes I have tested so far, and the specs are exactly what people want and are looking for. Anioki is pushing the boundaries like no other brand on this segment on the market. Everything about the design screams power and business. This e-bike is very well made and very well finished. Absolutely stunning bike, or I should call it a moped, that also offers so much room to upgrade and tailor it to any type of rider needs. Over six hours of continuous pedaling and being able to get off the bike and walk like I only bike for 30 minutes says a lot about this frame design. I don't think this is a coincidence and probably took a lot of effort and time to get to this final design. And this seat, I cannot stress enough, this is so comfortable, even on a custom seat you get after like four or five hours of riding, continuous riding, you get a little bit of discomfort and some numbness, which is, you know, expected, but still so comfortable and manageable. Just think of six hours plus of riding. I was able to just walk off and not have any pain after one hour or next day, which says a lot. Guys, I really like this bike and this is my top one pick for long range and comfort. From all other e-bikes and this fat tire segment I tried so far or I've seen online. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I'll definitely follow up and how you like this model. I hope you liked it as much as I did. It was a long but super fun experience. Thank you for watching till the end and I'll see you next time.